Hi all, this is Maylene Velasquez. I am a licensed clinical social worker and a registered play therapist. Today I wanted to share with all of you a technique for improving family communication. This is part of the Back to Basics series and so it is a strategy that I learned many years ago but one that I use very frequently in sessions with families. It's actually a strategy that I tend to use right in those beginning sessions. The technique involves having family members sit back to back, right, where they can't see where they're creating and taking turns and one of them giving instructions and the other one following the instructions. What they're going to do is that the individual who is giving the instructions is going to be creating a tower and giving instructions to the other individual to then make a tower that is the same as the one that they're making. So this is hard for me to show with my setup, so I'm just going to show you the tools that I use. So what you want to do is that you want to give each family member a set of blocks. You can either send it to them if you're doing this online, send it to them ahead of time, or you can check with the family if they have blocks available. You want the family to have blocks that are different colors and also that are different shapes. This is going to help you, one, to be able to assess the family's capacity to communicate with each other. And two, it's gonna make it more fun and interesting. So I use something like this. And so you wanna give them about seven or eight blocks each, and you want each uh, family member to have exactly the same blocks. After you have given them the blocks, what you wanna do is that you wanna instruct the family to sit on the floor and to be back to back with each other. So they can be back to back with each other in this way where their backs are actually touching or they can be a little bit separate from each other. But what you don't want is for them to be able to see what the other is creating. If you have more than two family members and you're gonna set them up, maybe one here and the other one here, but with the person that's giving the instructions um, where they can't see uh, the tower of the person that's giving the instructions. What I like to do if I have enough time is I like to have each of the family members that are present take a turn in giving instructions. And I like to do two rounds with each individual. The guidelines for this intervention are pretty simple. After you've had each family member sitting on the floor uh, with their sets of seven or eight identical blocks, you're gonna do two rounds with each individual. On the first round, you're gonna have the one individual who's gonna be giving the instructions and everyone is gonna be following the instructions quietly, which means that they're not allowed to ask questions. Once they finish building, then they're gonna be able to observe each other's towers. This is usually a really uh, fun part that creates lots of laughter as they look at the tower and they look usually completely different. Then you're gonna do a second round where the same individual who was given the instructions is now going to answer questions that the others are following and you want them to create a different tower this time. Once you're done, then you can take turns with the other individuals who might be present, who might wanna be um, the leader who then gives the instructions. For me, it's helpful to give each family member a chance to be the instruction giver. This really helps the family to see what happens when communications are completely missed and what they can do in order to improve the way that they speak with each other. As always, at the end of each intervention, I like to then do a debrief or a process with the family. Where I might ask things like, how was this intervention for you? What did you think the purpose of it was? What was it like when you couldn't ask any questions? What was it like when you looked at your tower and it looked completely different from the instruction giver's tower? What was it like for you when you were asked questions about the instructions that you were giving? Are there times in your daily family life where this happens? Where maybe you think that you communicate really clearly and then you come back and something completely different happened? And then I might give a homework directive. And when I think about homework directives, I like for them to be really, really easy and simple. So I might ask the family, you know what? Maybe as you go through this week, I want you to think about the way that you communicate. 
and maybe think about whether there's something else that you can say that would help your message to really be heard in the way that you meant it. And so even though I'm giving this prompt to everyone present because I think it's important for everyone to hear it, this is really a prompt to help the parents to communicate their message clearly. As always, as you think about providing any uh, new intervention, for me it's usually helpful to have a little meeting with the parents where I'm explaining the purpose of what we're going to be doing. What I wouldn't do with an intervention like this is explain to them exactly what we're going to be doing because I want to assess their quality of communication like I mentioned before and I also think it makes it more fun that way. So feel free to take this intervention and make it into your own. I always think of the importance of the clinician's use of self and interventions have to be authentic. They also need to be guided by the relationship that you have with the family and by the presenting problem that you're working on. I hope that this was useful and helpful to your practice. If there's anything else that you would like to hear, please feel free to let me know. Thank you. Bye.